Mr. Bob Haig. He is the Vice President of Sales and Marketing with the Crystal Group. And this topic is Military Autonomous Capable Hardware Rapidly Applied to Commercial Vehicles. Please give Bob a very warm welcome. And welcome everybody to the Solutions Theater. Thanks for coming back after lunch. I'm Bob Haig. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Crystal Group. Crystal Group is a company of about 250 employees. We're located in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, about four hours due west of here. Our business model centers around taking commercial off-the-shelf technologies and really ruggedizing them so those technologies can survive in harsh environments. The majority of our business today is on the military side. And I'm going to give some examples of how we've grown and made this technology work in the military side and now how we're bringing it across on the commercial side of our business. Much like AUBSI or the Exponential Convention itself, it wasn't that many years ago where this was primarily a military conference. Like Pendulum has swung to be a bit more commercial at this show, the same thing has happened to our businesses. We've had to become really capable in the industrial and commercial part of our business because we've learned the harsh environments that exist in the military are one of the same harsh environments that exist in the commercial space. I'm happy to be leading a conversation about how we bring some of this rugged capability from the military space into the autonomous vehicle world because if you think about it a little bit, it shouldn't surprise you that the trunk of a car is a really unfriendly environment. No cooling, very hot, a lot of vibration when you're running over poles in the road or railroad tracks. So I feel it's really appropriate that we're sharing some of the techniques that we learned on the military side of the business and bring it over to the military, to, to the commercial side where we're applying today in autonomous vehicles. Before I get started with the actual formal agenda, it's not paging. But before I get started on the actual agenda, I wanted to reflect a little bit. A couple of weeks ago, I was in Embedded World in Nuremberg, and I thought it was really interesting as you walk around that show and around this show, we hear a lot about IoT, we hear a lot about the cloud, we hear a lot about the edge. And I found it very fascinating that one of our Intel speakers over there, when asked the question, what is the edge? He answered very succinctly saying, we need to think about the edge as the intelligent edge. Because of limitations in the infrastructure, the edge now is like a little factory. It needs to have the ability to compute, store, process, and network in addition to aggregating all the sensor information at the edge. So in our world, we've adopted that terminology of thinking about the intelligent edge applied in some harsh environments. So we've really coined the term, we're operating in the, in the intelligent, rugged edge. And that helped put some context for me around the conversation. Now, as I move into the formal part of the presentation, I'm gonna share with you a little bit about what we're doing in the military and how we actually ruggedize things so that you can see how that technology and capability naturally pulls across into the autonomous space. As I said earlier, there's a lot of similarities between military and autonomous. And I'm gonna share a little bit more of the tricks we do and some of these cybersecurity things we're doing in the military that we see as becoming burgeoning needs on the autonomous space as well. Give you a feel for the success stories we've had and then share a little bit about at the end of how of some things we can we believe we can do for you. To start, I want to share a little bit about Crystal Group itself. I mentioned we're an employee-owned company of about 250 employees. We pride ourselves on being technologists who can integrate things, come up with new products very quickly, very cost-effectively, and work really hard with our customers to customize solutions for their space. Because of that, we fancy ourselves an engineering house, customization house with the ability to really manufacture and deliver high volumes of products to our customers. Our lineup is made up of the core products here, and I would be lying if I told you you went to our website and see everything we do. Most of our customers like something and they want it iterated just a little bit. Can I get a little bit more I.O.? Can I get a DVD drive, some more storage, and the like? Because, as I said earlier, our job is to ruggedize processors, drives, commercial off the shelf that we instantiate in the products on the left. Now, as I come back to talking about the intelligent, rugged edge, I wanted to give you this flavor of the broad edge computing ecosystem. 
And as we got into this, as we started bringing more of the military technologies over into the autonomous space and the commercial space, really a lot of those target platforms are operating in some very tough environments. On the left, you'll see wind turbines, oil platforms. Upper right, you'll see commercial and military aircraft. Towards the bottom, you'll see trucks operating autonomously and cars. A lot of places where we don't have an IT cooling environment that takes care of the environmentals. I put a little asterisk by every place where Crystal Group already has deployed some of the rugged compute capability. And we see this ecosystem becoming larger and larger. And the need for actually rugged components to fill parts of these spaces is really growing as the customer begins to push these out further, further into their ecosystems. Again, I mentioned our military heritage. I'm going to give you a couple of slides of what we do on the autonomous side today in the military. We're on over 600 programs in Ministry of Defenses and DOD around the world. On the left, you'll see our three primary spaces of sea, land, and air. It's not unusual to see us in a full, full sets of racks of equipment on submarines. As I move across the slide, you'll start to see some of the unmanned applications. Our equipment is not only running in the airborne predator that you see there, but we're also very prevalent in the ground stations. That's also got a big requirement as we move into more of a harsher environment in parts of the world. Some specific examples. This is an example of the Navy's RQ-21A UAV, where we're applying, again, rugged equipment in the aircraft and on the ground station. And I thought it was an interesting coincidence that in today's show guide, there's actually a Navy article about increased funding for this platform. So, of course, we're feeling good about that and seeing that the, the reliability of the platform is driving the Navy to deploy more equipment. More unmanned applications, in this case in the U.S. inventory. On the right, unmanned small helicopter, the Fire Scout. And on the left, the Gorgon Stair application of putting together a much more virtual, feeling like a real view of the battlefield from a radar perspective. The equipment in there has to survive, and that is all in the unmanned space. So our job is to take that capability and move it across. I do want to next show you just a couple of pictures of how we actually ruggedize commercial equipment so that it survives in these environments. So again, you can gain confidence that as we move this into more and more of the autonomous world in the commercial space, it's going to work. The pictures, I think, do a pretty good job on these slides to show you a lot of what we're doing. We make sure we take care of our own chassis. We machine all of our, all of our pieces of metal right inside Crystal Group. We have found that the construction of the chassis is a big deal for keeping COTS boards from warping, turning. The way those are mounted is particularly important. We coat all the boards, most of the electronics that are in here. We do a lot of things to make sure that once we drop those COTS boards in here, that they're going to survive. I think the picture on the lower right is really cool, and that, that is an actual server, an actual switch in this case, that's gone through dust testing and is still running. A lot of this equipment is running in the Middle East, where the dust is very fine, and we get all kinds of our competitors having issues. We work hard to get that capability in place so that when we bring the products across, again, to the commercial space, they're going to survive. And as I said at the bottom on the bumper sticker on this chart, all of these platforms we're providing from a commute, com compute storage and networking are really becoming host to our customers' artificial intelligence applications. I'll give you an example of what we do. This is a, this is a switch. We buy this switch from our, our partner, in this case, Ruckus. We basically throw the chassis away, put our own chassis on, and do a lot of ruggedization of the components that you see at the bottom. And, that, and then everything goes out the door with at least a five-year warranty from us because we're you know, very pleased with the testing results we get by applying these techniques. I also want to touch lightly on cybersecurity because we're hearing more and more from our autonomous customers, particularly on the commercial side, that cyber is a big deal. I show, I'm showing you here some of the things we do on the military side, again, that do pull across naturally under the commercial side. We're a hardware provider in general, but there's some things we can do to make sure our adversaries don't get inside the box, and if they do, the box cleans its own contents and the like. 
So I've listed some bullets that range from anti-tamper, anti, anti, I'll just say coding, to make sure that bad people can't get in and do some things with the components. We do some things like turn off some of the ports on the computers that aren't used to make sure there's not a hack thing there. And again, that's going to be important as we move into the autonomous space because we can't afford for any of the cars to be hacked in this network either. So now I've given you a good feel for what we do in the military, and I want to share with you how we've moved this into the commercial space and then specifically into autonomous cars. What you should see from those pictures is that those are pretty harsh environments. An oil rig, power substation, places where humans don't normally survive on their own, that's where we thrive. And on the upper right, we'll start talking about the autonomous car itself. On this slide, I've tried to capture what's common between military and an AV environment. A lot of similarities. Both, both industries want to leverage the latest and greatest commercial off-the-shelf technology. Often there's not enough space, very harsh environments, need some cyber protection. And what we find in the autonomous vehicle space is our requirements tend to keep cycling over and over as our customers are trying to test the latest LiDAR, the latest sensor, very similar to what we see in the military. So from our perspective, there's some similar building blocks that apply to both spaces. Knowledge of the COTS industry, ability to quickly adapt and iterate your design, and then the ability to keep engineering in partnership with our customer while being able to deliver in volume. I want to show you just two examples on the commercial side. This is a success story where we've applied that same capability for the military in the power substation. We put together some COTS technology, we put a hyper-converged infrastructure in place, we put a fanless server in place because of EMI requirements there, and we're able to provide some chassis that really met this customer's capability. And now on the autonomous space, specifically on the commercial world of autonomy, I mentioned all those similarities from the military side of continuous change. Sometimes we may only get requirements on a cocktail napkin at that. But our job as being a small employee-owned company is to be the technology partner with our AV companies. We are very happy when they call us and say, I love how your product's working, but guess what? A brand new GPU just came out on the market. I want to get that integrated in. Our brand new processor's out. For us, the magic is to make sure we're creating a very reliable platform that's able to adapt to as technology adapts. We have autonomous vehicle customers that are continuously trying different sensors. But as you see those components on the right, that's actually one of our boxes with four GPUs in, two processors. The boxes to the right are actually a cooling system because now we've got customers that want the latest processors, the latest graphics processors, and they're generating almost 2,000 watts of heat. So the ability to dissipate the heat in an efficient manner is a big deal, and we're happy to play that role with our customers. And as I, as I begin to wrap up here, I want to reflect back on a few of the, a few of the main points we've made here. The platforms we're, we're providing out at the harsh, rugged edge really are all hosting a version of AI or machine learning. Our job as Crystal Group is to provide a platform that not only is reliable and capable, but is also adaptable. Every one of our customers in this space is, is in the experimental phase, trying to figure out what are the algorithms that are most efficient in the autonomous world space. Many of you that are serving that market know that algorithms are continuing to evolve, and therefore the hunger for more processing power seems to be almost infinite in our space. Our team works hard to make sure that we can find technical solutions where the heat can be dissipated and yet still evolve the technology. I would share with you that as you're thinking about this, don't lose track of the cyber need. There's things we can do at the hardware level that protect that. And as a hardware provider, the cyber pieces we provide really are part of our customers' total, total cyber solution. As I, if you reflect back on that ecosystem chart I showed you that had the planes and the cars and the trucks, there's a big niche for IoT products that can have to survive in a rugged, harsh environment. So hopefully, as you start seeing those applications, you'll keep this in mind or some of the people like us that do that. And now as I, as I wrap up, I want to just share with you that 
Crystal Group, we've got a booth at 1616 over here. So we really welcome you guys stopping by, seeing what we do, and seeing if there's solutions we can bring together to help solve your particular issues, business needs, or your customers' issues. So with that, let me, let me wrap it up and take any questions anyone might have. Uh, if you have a question, just go ahead and put your hand in.